When two are in love Do 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 Rain Slow motion Slow motion When two are in love Lovers, if you have not already done so, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you do not have a retirement and or investment plan in place through your employer, please check out the Acorn app below. Now, shit bitches, we is winding down on more days on time a princely life in funk part i think it's 11 i think you know i correct myself and put it below child anyway so here we are you know more days a hot mess okay he laying on the floor crying shaking and shivering you know like a drug-free movie that they show you in junior high school or middle school depending on where you grew up and he comes to a realization that the time was a very important variable in his life. Of course it was, nigga. You must day to continue on what I told y'all before that he finally says, because I know, I know ninjas. You know, I might not hunch ninjas, oh, but I know them, okay? And he admits to himself that he needed validation. He needed that. And I said, you need to rely on yourself for validation. Because you're not going to have a cheerleader. Your, oh, the only cheerleader you have in your life is your mama. The cheer, or if you got a big sister, because you know as a big sister, you cheering on your younger siblings all the time, all the time. He admitted that he required a cheerleader and validation, and he received that through his music. Now, luckily, this dude, manager slash lawyer named Ron Sweeney, he got a hold of Morris Day and was like, bruh, I'm going to hook you up. Now, remember, Judy had picked herself up, moved on there with the kids to work, to live in UCLA. She's pursuing her um, degree in law, okay? She never disrespected him. Good job, Judy. You know, I had mad respect for her. She said that. She never treated him bad in regards to being a father. She allowed him to, you know, see his sons and establish a relationship with his sons. Because you know you evil bitches. You evil bitches. If the niggas ain't paying, then they cannot see their children. Y'all do what y'all need to do or what you feel you need to do. But guess what? The only person you hurting in the long run is your baby. But I just had enough for a day. Okay, I don't want no hate mail. Judy says to Morris, Morris. I believe in you. I, I believe that Judy never stopped believing in more. You know what I'm saying? It's just sometimes niggas just go left. Child, it's always a bunch of vagina over there on the left side, child. They never go right. It's just, they just, go. anyway. I told y'all before, ninjas' brains be broke. And in their mind, the only thing that could fix it is Virginia. Okay? Anyway, but, Judy says to him, Morris, I will take you back, bruh. But you need to... Work on your music again. You need and you need to get into therapy, couples therapy. Now, Morse, his thought on couples therapy, and after he said it, I was like, you know what, you're right, bro. You're right. He was like, you know, I'm not trying to sit and talk to a stranger about my problems and pay him two hundred dollars to do it when I can write this book and be just fine. Oh, he is adamant about not doing therapy but he ended up doing it and this is the thing this is why i say men have a problem with therapy or if a man does have a problem with therapy what more they said was that it made him feel like the bad guy it like, always felt like judy was always the winner okay like judy had it all together and just Morse day was fucked up even though yeah. it's true you know he was messed up but I can see why, because you know, men, they're, they're, 
they, they, they real soft. I'm sorry, men that be that's looking at this. Y'all soft. Y'all soft. I'm sorry. Men are also, I don't care if he is the king. I don't give a frick if it's Mufasa. Okay? Y'all be soft on it. It's Like, men are physically stronger, but women are mentally stronger. Child, do we know how to keep on pushing? Didn't Judy keep on pushing? So, Ron Sweeney, you know, the dude, the manager slash lawyer dude was like, I can help you. Okay, Ron Sweeney tested the market and found out that, ooh, there's a hungry audience out there for the time. Why wouldn't it be? Morris, why wouldn't you think that people still want you? Man, I don't give, I don't care how shiny your conk is. I don't care how much Beijing you put in your bird and your hair. You will always be Morris Day. And, 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 and now, I find out that you live down here in Atlanta. If I see you, bro, I'm going to kiss you in the mouth. Okay, I told you before, my mouth is real clean. Okay, I already didn't talk to my wife about it. She know when I see you, I'm going to kiss you. So because it was a market out there, Ron Sweeney set up some dates for the time. Now, Morris needed to get the time back together. Now, the white dude, Monty, you know, even Morris was like, yeah, he a white dude, but he got a whole lot of soul. Jelly Bean, they was like, oh, yes, Ninja, bring me in. So then they put the dude Freeze on bass, they picked up William Bryant. He played keyboards for Marvin Gaye and another dude, Tori Ruffin, who was the guitarist. We back in action, brothers. He said the first rehearsal felt warm and tingly. He ain't actually say that. Y'all know I be improvising because I can't remember word for word every goddamn thing and I can't write down every goddamn thing. But anyway, he said that first rehearsal, it just fit. So Prince chimes in and said, brother, that's why I never gave up on you. I always believed in you and the time. Now, right now, it's 1992, okay? And Morris Day and his family are living in Atlanta, good old Atlanta. I told you, Morris, if I see you, I'm going to kiss you in the mouth. He is living well and happy. Not well as in rich, but he's very comfortable. Him and his family are comfortable in the Atlanta. Now, Judy just passed the LSATs, but her... I'm going to say this turn took a right because it went right. She had created this candy company, and she was successful doing a candy company. This hussy is a whole lawyer, and she decided to make candy? I don't blame you, Judy. I don't blame you. Do what the universe tells you to do. Okay, I just passed the bar. Okay, or the LSAT, you know, but... I'm making candy, and this bullshit is very lucrative. It probably is, because sometimes them lawyers, child, they got to start way from the bottom. You don't want to go through that BS. The time is filling clubs, concert halls, and small arenas. Mm, mm. I don't know why he thought that the time wasn't still good. Nigga. He says, <sighs> Jerome still brings out the mirror, and MD is now Morse. We're working on his third son. Cameron was born November 1st. 1999. On to more good news. The Time closes out a big budget movie called Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Again or Strikes Back. Do I remember that movie? Now, after all his good luck going on, here come Prince ass. He calling, well, not really Prince, you know, one of his, you know, minions, you know, one of them fools that got Stockholm, okay, one of them. But one of the Stockholm people called him and said, hey, look, Prince got a tour coming up, and he wants you on it. You know why? Because it's 1999, and Prince is about to exploit the hell out of this. Is, see, this is the bullshit I'm talking about right here about Prince. Prince is so maniacal. I'm sorry. He is maniacal. So anyway, the story goes like this, the way that Morris Day puts it out there. He says that before the tour started, Prince had an old big bash down there to Paisley Park. He wanted the time to perform. And what he wanted was for Morris Day to swing out on a rope. Are you serious, nigga? Can, you can get Usher on a rope. Who else you get on a rope? I don't know, maybe Michael Jackson. Somebody that's a dancer, you know, who's athletically built that could possibly do it. But once you, get, once you become a daddy, I don't think you should be swinging on ropes, okay? Because suppose the rope break. I mean, then we got to deal with the life insurance policy. Yeah. It's like... To me, when Morris Day said that Prince had him put makeup on his back, you know, it's, I don't know. Prince is a maniac, man. Oh, he was a maniac, but child, I digress. Morris Day said he didn't get me up there. There was a stunt double swinging out 
child, grown ass man swinging on a rope, and he don't work for Bonham and Bailey's. Get out my face so at that shindig. Morris Day said, We wanted to prove to you, Prince, that we still had it. Prince said, Of course you had it. Why wouldn't you? So then he talks about another party that he had. I didn't know that Prince was old party, or, you know, shindigger like this. I didn't know that. But he said he had the Lady Rosie, who sang Diamonds and Pearls, Lenny Kravitz, George Clinton, and a couple of play people from Sly and the Family Stone. Now, one of the dudes that he got from Sly and the Family Stone was this dude named Larry. Larry was the one who introduced Prince to JW. That's J I'm just gonna leave that there, y'all figure it out. Because of his affiliation with JWs, his life was changing or his thought pattern was changing drastically. He had said to Morris, I'm about to take all the sex out my songs. I was like, how that's gonna work, Clarence? Everything about you is sassy. Everything. I mean, okay, let me know when it get there. He even dropped the symbol and turned his name back to Princey Poop. Now, this is funny. Now, what Morris Day said was that Prince came up with the idea, I need to have a chat with you brothers. I need to break some things down to you if we're going to work together, mother hunchies. The time. All right, time. While you here, there'll be no meat, no booze while you at Paisley Park. This is my rules. This is how it goes. Then he commenced to talk about the JW stuff. I ain't going to say stuff, but commenced to talk about the JW rules. Or religion. Morse Day references the controlling behavior remained the same and they sat quietly and humored this man because they still trying to break bread with this Negro. Okay. Sometimes you got to, you know, shut your mouth sometimes and just look. I told you that's what I do. That's how I survive life. Just look. Okay. Morse Day talk about he cannot embrace the JW beliefs because he felt like it was cultish. Uh, because, uh, yeah, my family is very involved with JW. I'm not going to give my opinion on that. But, so. but he believes that the, the religion is very harsh. Prince took a pause, maybe to take a drink, because they said he was talking to him the whole damn time. Tori said, man... Help me, man. Do y'all got a drink? You know, Prince just told you, you don't need to be drinking nothing out in Paisley Park. You can't eat no, you know, beef sandwich, no roast beef. You can't drink nothing. All you need to do is just listen to him. That's all you can do. Morris said, I got you. Here go a little flask of cognac or whatever it was. He took a swig and put it in his pocket. You know, Prince came back. You know, they still looking at him. The dude, Tory must have accidentally moved the wrong way because the flash fell out his goddamn on pocket, okay? Hilarious. Everybody looking down at it like a pregnant woman, like, I'm not touching that shit, knowing that everybody fucked her. Ooh, that was so, you know, messed up to say, but I'm sorry. Okay. But anyway, eventually the dude, Tory picked it up and put it back in his pocket. Now, the way that Morris Day describes this is that Prince likes security. He did not like unanswered questions. And what JW did for him was provide answers. So what else Morris Day says that I'm like, ooh, I never even thought about that, was that isn't it strange that Prince is picking up the faith that MJ, Michael Jackson, put down in 1987? It's weird. It's weird. I don't know. I, th I think geniuses are crazy. I'm starting to believe that Prince is a little crazy. I mean, uh, you know, that's my man. I mean, when two are in love, I mean, I still gets busy off that. Baby, baby, put two are in love on the uh, record player, baby. We get ready to get friendly tonight. When two are in love. Do, 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 Slow motion, slow motion, when two are in love. So what Morse Day does in this part right here is he references Prince's father. He says that uh, Prince had gave his dad one of his houses, but when his father died, 
he bulldozed the house. Now, that's weird. It's, it's weird because you would think that there was reasoning behind it that he never spoke of, but he bulldozed all his houses that he wasn't using anymore. Prince said that he was just clearing ground. Hmm. You couldn't rent that motherfucker? So in 2003, MD is back, okay? He's still over there, or he went back over there to the park of the, you know, Virginia's over there because he says that his marriage is shaky because his wife is now his business partner and not his wife. She's felt more like a sister. It happens. It happens. It really does. Judy was pushing for therapy. You know Morris Day. He, he not feeling that. He didn't feel it the last time. The only reason why he did it last time was to get his woman back. Child. But he ain't doing it because he didn't went back over there with the ladies in the pockets in Virginia. So okay. Here we are. Nelly's manager, Courtney Benson, went up to Morris Day and said, hey, you got a record deal? Morris said, no. I'm going to get you a record deal. Morris said, you know how many people tell me they're going to get me a, a record deal? Bert and Ernie just came up to me the other day and said he had a record deal for me or they had a record deal for me, and I ain't seen them niggas yet. So what ended up happening was the dude, Nelly's manager, Courtney Benson, actually got him a record deal with Bob Cavallo. Bob Cavallo put a decent, a decent deal on the table. Bob Cavallo was now the manager. And his brother, Jesse, was the role manager. Okay. It's About Time was the new album. I think it, I think he said that he had a song with E-40. He was supposed to do something with Jazzy Faye, but it didn't work out right. But the label had a release party, and guess who was there? That daggone Prince. He approached the record execs and said, those are my boys, you better do them right. Ciao. He own, I told you, he owned them people. <laughs> he owned you. Child. So what Morris Day said was initially, Prince wasn't feeling the project. And it took one of his, I think, a close musician friend to say, um, I really think you need to listen to this because it is pretty good. Prince changed his mind, called him and said, good job, baby. One day, Prince rented out a club and was working at the DJ booth, spinning records. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. That's a good job to me. I mean, like, if you're not on stage, I would always be a DJ if I could spin records, if I could, you know, but that's a good job. So anyway, Prince was at, uh, he rented out a club, he worked in a DJ booth, he waved him over, come here, Morris, come here, and said, brother, I'm working on something. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I got you in mind. Now, if you have not already done so, please, Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.